Hello, welcome to another exciting episode of Token Podcast. I'm your host and sometimes referee, the friendly neighborhood, Zach Stad Pearson, still recovering from going to the dentist. And today, I'm joined by he who's 9,000, but only once in a while, a one officer 9,000 plus one. Hey, how you doing? Got my sympathies with regard to the tooth stuff. It is not exactly pleasant. Especially in the winter months. And of course, here comes our new-ish challenger. A one DJ who prefers cereal, but we just call him Milk. Yeah, uh, shouts out to the dentist for doing their necessity or doing their necessary job. Uh, but yeah, if I uh, if I don't behave well and I have to get like a cavity filled, I hate my life for the next four days. <laughs> yeah, luckily I'm a little bit smarter with my uh, sweets intake. My biggest issue is more like apparently I'm an uneven brusher. I do more detail on one side than the other, and it came back to bite me in the mouth. <laughs> Sounds yeah. painful. Oof. Yes, uh, getting bit in the mouth. <laughs> Yes. Um, and of course, we have the smallest of the small, but the biggest shit talker, a one honeybee. Hello, hello. I am the human equivalent of a chihuahua. Also, dental stuff scares the shit out of me. Yes, well, I mean, I'm not sure why you can always get, you know, anesthesia. I feel like you've mentioned that Chihuahua thing before, though, which is kind of hilarious on some level. I am a Chihuahua. I'm small, but like vicious. Verbally. Verbally. Um, if I had the chance, I would. I would absolutely uh, bite someone's kneecaps. Oh dear! Protect your kneecaps. Yeah. Kneecaps are mine, bitch. I have no idea how to follow that up. So moving into the topic, <laughs> um, bro, like that's a first even for me. Um, moving into the topics, uh, first and foremost, you know, if I haven't said it already, which I know I have, Happy New Year. I'm assuming everybody here saw the end of the year thank you video. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, see. Uh, going forward, uh, as officer will tell you, holy shit, everything that could happen, happened right when we went on break. It was literally, so December many. should be renamed Murphy's fucking law. What? what the fuck? So much stuff going on. Murphy's what? month. What's ha! going on? What'd you say, honeybee? I didn't hear anything about it. What happened? I know because your settings are weird and you don't check the topics or just the fucking texting page. I um, busy. <laughs> this whole holiday season was insane. I know. That's why no one's holding it against you. <laughs> um, all right. So first and foremost, just and this is not topics. This is just shit that happened. Uh, GTA 6 got exposed ahead of schedule by almost a full year. Um, fucking... Jeff Gribb or Jeff whatever his name is, the dude who's been snitching on Xbox and Sony with a 99% accuracy for like two and a half years, basically laid out what's supposed to be happening with new systems this year. Um, Fucking, we finally got actual information about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth besides a new trailer. Uh, Insomniac got hacked so hard that we know everything that they're going to be doing for like almost the next fucking 10 years. I'm not joking. That is literal, not metaphorical. It is nuts. Yes. They got, they got Capcomed. <laughs> I, I hope YouTube doesn't fuck with that, but they got Capcomed. Um, they're probably going to fuck with that. Um, but hey, if you're listening, YouTube people, it's C-O-M, not the other way. C-O-M, just so we're clear. Yeah, dude, if they get you, that's their fault for being perverts. Yes. <laughs> also i don't think anyone really knows what the past tense for that other word is i don't need you trying to guess honey be keep it to yourself uh, i'm not saying anything you were thinking it because i yes. got to feel it from across the room yes, yes. <laughs> that's okay i'm just uh, i'm gonna behave well we all know that's a lie moving on <laughs> a lie detected and your text determined that was a lie uh, and on top of that, uh, we will at some point in time, with all that craziness that happened, we will try to discuss, uh, you know, well, 
I want to say Marvel ignorance, but that would imply that Marvel's being ignorant, not just they have, they have the weirdest hate fans I've ever seen in my life. You know, when Star Wars fans hate new Star Wars, they just go look at old Star Wars and don't care about it. When people want to hate on Disney or Marvel, they'll still go watch everything that comes out. I don't understand that logic. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Yeah, we could do a fucking whole topic about them. Um, and on top of that, uh, we will at some point in time discuss who all will and won't be involved with the on-site review of the THC Bakery. Because we need to go into some hard stats with that. You guys don't need to do much. Just, you know, eat food and enjoy yourselves, whoever ends up coming. Um, shut up, honeybee. So. Okay. <laughs> <sighs> so, that being said, let's get into the topics. Number one, discussing as many leaked things as we can from Insomniac's new X-Men saga of games et- and etc. Topic two, can GJ even improve on their formula or for those not interested, as in not interested in the franchise, what would they have to do differently to get your money? Which I'd love to hear Honeybee's answer because I know she don't play GTA. Um, right, yeah. Um, <laughs> topic three. Yeah. Are there too many fighting games commercially available or is there no such thing? I'll go into more detail when we get there. Topic four. What are some things you want to discuss in 2024 on the channel? Pitch a new show idea or just tell me what you want to talk about. Let me just ask Promise what GTA is. All right. So, uh, for the first time this year, instead of me volunteering you guys, who wants to volunteer to go first? Probably somebody who knows more about the specifications of uh, some of the more finer details about all of it. <laughs> yeah, I... I'm going to explain it, and I'm just saying, once I finish, who wants to oh. go? Try my hand at it. Okay. And let me see. Can I put a text? Uh, uh, can I copy paste a text into the drawing thingy? Let's see if I can do that. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Oh, shit. Well, technically. Wow. Yeah, you just got to zoom out some. All right. So those are the topics. Oh, so, shit. yeah. First things first. Uh. I don't know how y'all missed this. Well, you know, you know, barring Honeybee, who's exempt. Um, so. Okay, that's fine. Um, so basically, uh, Insomnia got the Capcom treatment. Now, for those who don't remember last year or maybe two years ago, Capcom had about, I believe, eight gigs or 14 gigs of data be taken from them. Now, I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but keep in mind, this is a game company. And most of those files were pictures and text. So they found out pretty much almost everything Capcom is planning to do going forward for X amount of years or trying to do, right? Insomniac got it worse. They were being blackmailed by a hacker group for about 2.5 or either 3 million USD. And if they didn't give them the money, they were going to release all the information and data that they had, but they didn't just have game information. They had personal information. They had passports. They had social security uh, card pictures. They had state IDs, all that shit. So fuck these guys. And just so we're clear, I want to make that very clear. I am aware of hacking, but unlike most people, I actually know the definition of hacking for the uninitiated, which is probably everyone here. Hacking literally just means augmenting some device to do something it normally doesn't do. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. So if a hacker goes in and wants to go look at and play test builds of Wolverine game, I'm okay with that. Hey, it's Insomniac's fault. But when they start blackmailing people to go and get their, per- to not show their personal information, that's when I have a fucking problem. That's when a line has been crossed. I'm not okay with that. I do not condone that and I do not support that. But them games though, Oh, here's the weird part too. IGN, which I believe I put in the uh, scheduling page, IGN put up a whole entire fucking video specifically discussing everything inside that game. Want people to know about the game lineup in a video. Yeah, that's real loyalty right there. So uh, I'm gonna go down the list 
you know, stop me if anything catches your interest or just go, holy shit. Like I said, and like I predicted back with Milk, Spider-Man 2 was supposed to be co-op. But they, they cut it. Us, yep. But they cut it. Venom is getting his own mini game, which they're going to try to nickel and dime us and charge us 74 like they did with Miles. There will yeah. be Spider-Man 3. Um, Carnage won't necessarily be the main villain, but he will be the protagonist in DLC for uh, Spider-Man 2. There will be X-Men games. There will be a Wolverine game. Duh, we know about that one. And there may even be some crossover, but the X-Men game will have co-op. And I believe it'll be offline and online. I'm not sure. Uh, I know I'm forgetting something. Oh, they may be able to create a fighting game that exclusively only features X-Men characters. All right. Yeah. And, you know, after that, they stole a bunch of information, tried to blackmail people for it. And I'm just legitimately not fucking okay with that. So to answer your question, Honeybee, we basically know that we get an X-Men games and they're also going to be doing something with Black Panther, but we don't know if it's going to be the same Black Panther as the one that's getting his own game with uh, Captain America. Oh. But we do know that the Black Panther you will be playing is not T'Challa because T'Challa has died like in the movies. However, this Black Panther is not based on MCU. So they just decided to kill T'Challa anyway. It's kind of annoying. That's the one thing that would make people think it's based on MCU. Um, and it will more than likely not be played by the same guy who played T'Challa in uh, Marvel's Avengers. Fun fact, that guy also used to play Kratos. What? Yeah, and he's about the, the more same you know. as Honeybee. Um... Oh, uh, and uh, another thing we found out, which may or may not have been because of the leak. Uh, Sony has been trying to hide that Generation 1 PlayStation 5s, as in, you know, first off the line, have a upwards of 60-70% chance of internally frying its own motherboard or its own processor. Oh, seems like a bit of a problem. <laughs> yeah, via overheating. Well, then. I can't really go into the long-winded details because technically it's not a topic, but for those of you who have a PS5 and are scared, let's not bullshit, you have two choices. Number one, never stand your PS5 up straight, period. Do not play your PS5 in an upright position. Don't let it be in an upright position. Yeah, um, noted. Damn. Option two, well, I don't know if y'all have seen my heavily modded PS5, but I got a double-sided vent situation going on. And I got a carbon fiber sticker on the matte finish. I keep mine laying flat down and I have two sets of vents instead of just the, trying to blow it out through uh, on the side of the plastic. It blows it out through the plastic. I'll try to send you pictures of it, uh, honeybee, in case you want one. Thank you. Because I think you're like the only person here who has a PS5. Yeah. So, yeah. Um. All right, Milk. Uh. Tell us how you feel about that bullshit and don't feel scared to Google what else came up that we learned. <laughs> I mean, if I'm just going based off of strict to the things that you had mentioned, it's obviously, I feel like I have like a, an obligation to say that, yeah, the second the hacker starts blackmailing executives and workers with like their personal information, it's like you, I hope they find you and I hope you get thrown in jail because that's entirely inappropriate behavior. Also Honestly, if they catch bitch. him just for the blackmailing thing. Yeah, that too. <laughs> Keep it in blunt. Like, technically, probably should be thrown in for the leaks in the first place, but especially to then, you know, threaten the livelihoods of other people over some video games. <laughs> right to jail with you. Uh, but in terms of what we actually found out about the, the games that they are planning on releasing in the future, uh, I don't know, I like the lineup. Uh, specifically, the X-Men fighting game interests me uh, I don't even, I don't, I don't really keep up with the X-Men that much, but I feel like of any superhero franchise, that's probably the one that makes the most sense to turn into a fighting game. Cause it's like, here's the X-Men and here's like, you know, a, a bajillion people who are a part of it that still remains kind of like defined within its own little box. Uh, so you can take all of those and you just release those on your, on your platform. I'd be more interested to see the specifics of like, uh, what, um, like what framework 
are we thinking they're going to follow with that? Like what type of fighting game style is this game going to emulate? Is it going to be two dimensional? Is it going to be a, a Dragon Ball Fighter Z type situation? Uh, I don't know if they specified that anywhere or if that is specified anywhere. To but I like the idea. Today. Hello? Oh, hello. Uh, was that it? Yeah, that was, that was that's my main thing that I'm taking out of it for starts. Okay, well, you, you gotta let us know when you're done, because we can't just eyeball it. I did fair enough. Okay. Um, officer, you know, if you feel like looking up what all we found out that's legal, uh, you know, please do so. Uh, honeybee, why don't you go next? I don't want to drain your battery too much. Um, uh, what was the question again? Number one. Number one. Um, what does it say? Discussing as many leaked things as we can from Insomniac's new X-Men saga of games. What was the question? <laughs> Is there a question or am I just supposed to add something to that? There's I add something. I mean, honestly, I don't really have a ton to add. Um, at all. Okay. Fair. Oh. I guess we're going to be throwing in that bonus question, which I'm sure everyone who used to play Sega games is going to love. All right, officer. Hey, hey. Topic one. Uh, with regard to topic one, there was one thing about that leak that had me like mm, i don't know about that and that was that sony is being given exclusivity to make marvel like all of these marvel games in for the foreseeable future and uh, i've always been kind of iffy on exclusivity deals like that But otherwise, I'm definitely looking forward to all the X-Men stuff we're going to be getting, even if, you know, some of them are fighting games and that's never really been my jam. And those hackers, that was incredibly stupid. And honestly, like, what the fuck is wrong with you to threaten the livelihood of, you know, the people by releasing uh, the people worked for insomniac by releasing their personal details i <clears throat> i don't have a problem with say oh but you know we're gonna release all this information about uh like uh, video games and the like and you know projects that you're working on because that's people can hear that and you know then get like, oh wow really excited about it to, to know that you know something like that's coming in the future but threatening employees and the like? No. No. Fuck you. Don't do that shit. <laughs> and I think that's about it for me for topic one. Okay. So, uh, moving on then. <clears throat> Sorry, ingesting a burrito. All right. So, look, I don't hate Grand Theft Auto. Don't come after me, okay? I'm not trying <laughs> to deal with that fan base. I don't hate Grand Theft Auto as a concept. But I'm going to be the first to tell you, hey, look, I stopped after three. I stopped after three. That early? Damn. Yeah. So, can GTA even improve on their formula? Because their formula has been get you to do stuff that you can do in real life. But in a setting of the video games, because, you know, you won't get arrested and shot up by the cops or put in jail for like forever. Indeed. But that's an easy concept to do or easier and inexpensive concept to do for a lot of big companies these days. Now, this is a yes or no situation. Do you guys actually think they can improve on their formula, officer? Honestly... 
at this point, having seen even with like all the stuff in the more recent games, I'm not sure they can really add much more to it. But at the same time, I don't think they necessarily have to because they do have a pretty big following. But I'd applaud them if they tried. Okay. Milk? I think it's possible. I just don't know how likely it is to happen. Because the only thing that I can think of is like if Rockstar or whoever is on their team is more willing to listen to what the community, like community feedback on features that are added or just anything that's added into the game. That might be the only thing I could think of that could make it better. It's more just a question of if they actually would do that. So yes, but skeptical. And Honeybee? So I don't like Grand Theft Auto just at all, period, exclamation point. I've tried it, hated every single solitary second of it. Oh, damn. Uh, what would they have to do to differently to get my money? That's a good question. They'd have to um, change literally every single thing about the premise of their game. I cannot overstate how disinterested in Grand Theft Auto I am. And yeah, come at me, Grand Theft Auto fans. Come at me. Well, I guess that just leaves me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> insert a euphemistically polite version of what Honeybee said. I'm sorry. Fair enough. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm legitimately sorry. Come at her, but make sure to guard your knees. <laughs> or your ankles. They're not going to get the reference. Oh, wait. wait yes, they are. bite your ankles. Nom, nom. I know it sounds like, I don't know, the most generic statement ever, but hear me out. Besides what Honeybee said, you got to look at it from a modern perspective. When they first started doing this shit, it was just interesting seeing good stories being told on that scale, even though the characters didn't look hyper-realistic. A lot of people give a uh, San Andreas bullshit for their stereotypical use of colloquialisms. But it's accurate. Hood niggas gonna talk hood shit. Period. Can they talk more than hood shit? Absolutely. But are they going to when they're around the homies in the hood why why would they there's no actual good reason or incentive to personally i had saints row because as you, we all know saints row was basically here's another version of gta but later on what did they do they started leaning into the comical aspects of it Dubstep, the dubstep gun comes to mind. <laughs> and it was able to distinguish itself. And it still had funny writing. The combat was painfully boring. But the game, but uh, what the gameplay lacked in creativity, and that's being nice, it made up for in almost every other, <gasps> excuse me, every other aspect. And then you get to the fourth game where you're the fucking president. You basically have to stop to save the world from a goddamn alien invasion. I don't. It's think pretty GTA, wild. Yeah, I don't think GTA can improve on their formula because there's nothing for them to improve on. They have made it their goal to emulate life. They succeeded. So for the uninterested, what do they have to do to get my money? What do they have to do to get the honeybee dollar? Look. Ain't much I can tell you, man. I don't know what to tell you. Because what they're doing is not terrible. I don't think it's trash. I don't think it's boring. When I watch the YouTube cutscene stories of these games, I can actually watch them for like three or four hours. And, you know, not lose interest. I'm gonna pause that shit, take a nap, get something to eat though. You know. But they're fun to watch as if they were live TV shows. But when it comes to the actual games, go someplace, get out of a car, 
or moving vehicle, shoot something or someone, steal something or someone, put them in a car, duck and dodge people chasing you, give them to whoever they're supposed to give them to. Can you honestly tell me something has changed from the formula since what they started back in like 19, no, 1999 or 2000? Is it really different or was that just it still? No, that still definitely maintains the core formula of everything. I think it's more just much. Uh, Yeah, now you have the ability to striate from that and do, you know, other things. Well, you can do other things, but a lot of that is also happening under the guise of what you just mentioned. <laughs> so, yeah, and don't get me wrong. We all know how video games work. The, 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 the philosoph philosophical name for them or the undefined name for them is core gameplay loop. But here's the problem. GTA's fundamental gameplay style is not fun anymore. For me, it hasn't been fun in like 15 to 12 to 15 years. Because all it is, is make sure you're shooting with your gun where the reticle is. Or do a very generic close combat move. The end. Tell me I'm wrong. Exactly. I don't think you are. Exactly. I don't think I have the heart to tell yeah. you. <laughs> so now you see where me, why, how me and Honeybee came to this conclusion. It's not that yeah. the game is terrible. It's not that we feel it's overrated. It's that there is not enough deviation in gameplay. But I want to move on before the GTA people find my ass. <laughs> I mean, I'm not in the Listen, hood. So I, if... I, will, I will just say, I know I'm not the target audience. And I'll leave it at that. Fair enough. Yeah. Yep. I don't like it, but that game wasn't for me, you know, or people like me. And I'm pretty much her opposite and I'm still not into it. Um, <laughs> so topic three, again, providing details. All right. So guys, when we started this podcast, or just like two or three years ago, not even in the beginning, just like two or three years ago, it's that, that early ago, there was only like three mainstream new commercially available fighting games. Everything else you saw at EVO was some shit that was old, or it had a core fan base that could pull in a crowd. But it wasn't new, or it wasn't extremely popular to, you know, the levels of something like a Tekken or a Street Fighter. We had three. Now, going from 2023 to 2025, we might have six fighting games concurrently on the market simultaneously. Commercially available. Is that too many? Is this just a coincidence? Am I overthinking this? <laughs> Do they need to make less or rather they need to produce less? Or is there just not enough and there's room for everybody? Because I don't think there is. Uh, because if you actually play fighting games, or if you know anything about how fighting games work, people who master one or two fighting games, okay, that's cool. But almost nobody's mastering and entering tournaments, even in the professional grade, five or six different games in one year. Do you feel like there's overcrowding, Milk? If, okay, initially the way that I interpreted this question is just like, are there too many fighting games that are kind of in the limelight that people look at and care about? And so if I was to look at that, I would say, no, it doesn't feel like there's too many because there's still only a couple that will um, bring in the majority of people based on the namesake and the history they have. Your Mortal Kombats, your Smashes, your Tekkens, and your Street Fighters effectively is kind of, kind of how I would look at it. And then as you play those games, you either decide if you like them or not. And then you, uh, and if you don't like them, or if you just want to find a different experience, then you can start to branch out into other genres like the Fighter Z games, whatever miscellaneous anime fighting game, you know, X, Y, and Z company wants to publish that year, or even games like, um, like Guilty Gear has been a recent one in my life personally. So if I was to look at it from that perspective, I would say like, I feel like there's an appropriate amount of fighting games in general. 
because you're only going to have a couple that bring people in and then you're going to have a lot more that have significantly fewer people but uh you are going to give people more options as to how to work around it from a professional or, or like a sorry not a professional from a competitive standpoint that's a little tough to say uh because to be honest i don't really know what like those six kind of commercially available potentially competitively viable fighting games are Yeah, I was going to say, uh, would you mind naming what the six are? Just for a reminder. Hmm. Hold on. Because I could only think of four. Street Fighter 6, Tekken 8, Mortal Kombat 2023 or Mortal Kombat 1. Then you have Grand Blue versus 2. I don't know what what fucking you know suffix and prefix they're using but i'm just gonna say two grand blue versus two <laughs> um uh under night in birth two and technically that uh melty blood one is still going that's i eight. thought there was a new one for uh... there's a rumor of soul caliber seven at the end of the year and yeah there's been but... a rumor for years that Capcom versus SNK three went into production, but we don't know when it's dropping. The one I was thinking of was uh, wasn't there going to be another Blaze Blue game? No. Ah, okay. Huh. Fair enough. Yeah, so this is actually a tough situation for me to be in because I look at the games you just listed off, and I only know the first three. I've never heard of Grand Blue, Undernight, In Birth Two, or Melty Blood. Uh. So that that's that's a completely new, shocking experience for me. But uh, that's that's all I have to say for now. <laughs> okay, officer, your turn. Uh, far as I see it, so long as the games do enough differently from each other to make it, you know, unique. I don't think we can reach a point where there's too many. We might reach a point where there's too many that are doing one particular thing. I could see, you know, maybe that argument for like uh, games like Street Fighter. Or... Oh yeah, and I forgot King of Fighters 15. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Oh wow, they're up to 15 for that one. <laughs> I had thought they were like still in the early teens, not the mids. Uh, anyway, I think so long as they do enough to differentiate themselves from each other, I, I don't think we'll reach a point of oversaturation. So I think with where things are going now, it's not going in the direction of there's too many yet. Whether or not it'll be, you know, different come two years or even four years down the line. Uh, I don't know. We'll see where it goes. Okay. We'll be uh, obfuscating Honeybee from this question. Uh, I don't Honeybee, like fighting games, so. Oh, yeah. huh? You play a <laughs> yeah. fighting game. I played a single fighting game and I didn't like it. I mean, you kind of implied that you did, but I'm not holding it against you. I mean, it was okay. It He's was like, not okay. <laughs> yes, it's so okay. You still haven't mailed it back to me. Moving on. Oh, shit. Yeah, I was supposed to do that. Uh -huh. <laughs> My bad. Send sure. me your address. <laughs> By the way, check your uh, cell phone text. Um, okay, That's so we'll be uh, removing you from that question. Now, as far as me, well, I think it would be best to say, hey, look, there's too fucking many. Stop the bullshit. I'm not going to cap. <laughs> There's too many of you goddamn motherfuckers. And before the end of the year, we're supposed to be getting a new one too. And then there's a rumor. There's always a rumor, but this is more like it's an inevitability that uh, the studio that uh, Nintendo bought, quote unquote, for Namco Bandai, their job is to make Smash Bros. games. Like, that's it. In fact, if memory serves, their title is that's Studio... That's all? Yeah, if memory serves, their title name is Studio S and the S... What else could it stand for but Smash? I know, right? Or yeah, what Studio hell, Super oh, Mario? No, they do it in house. Very good naming things, don't you know? Yeah. So, and you know, new system, new Smash. We all know the drill. Yep. Yep. And 
Well, I mean, even if we didn't have snitches, we all know that Nintendo's new system, if it don't come out this year, it's being revealed this year. Ooh, ah. So, look, and this is coming from the guy who normally only fucks with Soul Calibur, Smash Bros, and Dead or Alive, which probably isn't coming back anytime <laughs> soon or ever. <laughs> Ah, uh, well. For those of I you played, who are curious about what Dead, Dead or Alive, Alive is, Beach Volleyball. See, that, that's why I'm glad I didn't give you Dead or Alive, because I think that would actually turn <laughs> you into a fight gamer, and fuck you. But for those of you who are <laughs> curious about why we're making fun of Dead or Alive, here's what you need to know. If you stop at six, it is one of the greatest fighting game series you will ever play. Don't go past five. Please, I will pay you not to. And it's not because of stripper outfits, contrary to popular belief. Very popular belief. <laughs> There's too fucking many. Listen, it's been a well, well documented thing that American fighting games online, whether it's because the developer has shitty net code or because it's just a stereotype, it's been a common knowledge for people to automatically know if you want to have a bigger play base of more than like maybe five people, you have to go and get the region coded to Japan versions of almost any fighting game. Oh, and Guilty Gear Strive. Yeah, there's 10 on the market right now. Forgot about that one. Guilty Gear Strive. Oh, wait, 11. Ah. Samurai Showdown came back. It's even got a Guilty Gear character in it. Oh, yeah. shit. Yeah. We got 11 on the market. That's Good too fucking Lord. many. That's too fucking many. Do they play different? Yes, mostly. But the biggest issue is that oversaturation is a thing. Remember when we were complaining about there's too many FPSs and they don't do anything different? I still feel like that's kind of an issue. Yep. Yeah, it's a pretty fair assessment. Yeah. That can happen to fighting games too. And then we accidentally create the same effect that happened those all those uh all those lonely lonely 20 years ago where it becomes a drought because the game companies the ones that are run by corporate greedy assholes and bastards think, oh, well, this was a good game, but it didn't make any money. Well, I guess we shouldn't make fighting games for another 30, 40 years. God, I can't wait till they try and make a fighting game into a live service. Why would you say that like that's not going to happen? <laughs> Why would you manifest that into the earth? It already because happened. Because they're stopped. already yeah. doing that. No, they already did, but then they stopped. It was weird. Ah, which one? Soul Caliber Burning Souls or something. And like Tekken. Bro. Wallets, am I right? And oh, Tekken. Uh, something. What's up? <laughs> what? No, I thought you said something. <laughs> no, uh, I was mentioning his joke. Yeah. He made a good joke. And Tekken something. Both of these games were live stream, on online only type situations. And. All you did was either pay for character access and play the game or some other shit. I don't know. It, it, supposedly it was a server test, but they ran those servers for like two years and then they cut them despite them being popular. So we know at some point in time, there's going to be a live service fighting game if there isn't already. And oh my and it'll God, if it comes shit. out this year, I'm punching my TV. <laughs> Just don't punch me. Well, you're not a TV, so you're you're in the clear. So there's there 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 is. I did kind of call that this is gonna happen though. Yes, but you know, you have a very high accuracy like me. Sometimes it's good to keep it to yourself because you let you your happiness breeds other people's depression. I know that's going to happen now. I just don't want it to happen this year. But yeah, there's True too enough. many. And to top it off, fan bases can be split and they can waver based on when you buy the game you don't know when's a good time everyone will tell you oh get it right when it comes out well guess what right when it comes out it's always at its weakest and has the least amount of characters in the fucking roster we all know this oh and budokai tenkaichi 4 is coming out this year we got a dozen games motherfucker jesus christ i'm not looking this up by the way i'm remembering as we have this conversation <laughs> um i am 
going to uh, rescind my previous statement and Thank say you. we are approaching a point of saturation. We might want to slow down a little. I appreciate that. So look, I think they need to calm down because if they split, fighting game is a small market. Oh yeah, Project L's coming out this year now, isn't it? God damn it. That one I 13. did on purpose. <laughs> That one I did on purpose. I'm not going to lie. Oh, and that one's four player. And Guilty Gear is getting ready to get a six player mode. That's going to be wild. So, yeah, I don't want there to be too many because unlike other genres, it can't survive oversaturation. RPGs can survive oversaturation. First person shooters can survive oversaturation. I'm not sure if racing games can, but let's be honest. Racing game and a Mario Kart clone is two different things, technically. But look what happened to them. They yeah. all tried to be Mario Kart back when Double Dash came out. And they all went away as quickly as they showed up. Now, you're lucky if there's three kart games in a 10-year time span. <gasps> you're lucky if there's three. So, I don't... And I'm not... And that's why. I don't want there to be too many. There are too many, but I don't want there to be too many because I'll feel bad for the people who have to play a, a game that could have got a sequel and it's going to take them 15 years to get a sequel. Remember, I play Marvel vs. Capcom games. If I played Marvel vs. Capcom, many if Marvel vs. Capcom came out when I was one year old and I played one through in infinite or four, I would be like mid 20s. Four games, and it took them damn near 20 plus years. That is scary. So yeah, moving on. All right, so I'm going to just ask right now, besides Officer, who here is not aware that Sega finally stopped being stupid and they're actually remaking or giving sequels to all the games they made that we loved? Who here doesn't know that? That would be me. Okay. Okay. They already released a trailer. Now. Oh, shit. Yes. The games that are being given a sequel or remade are Jet Set Radio. <gasps> Crazy Taxi. Sorry. <laughs> Golden Axe. And Streets of Rage 5. or Which is now called Streets of Rage Revolution. They also did not confirm that these were the only change. games being remade. But these were the ones that were in the trailer. Well... I think they also mentioned Shinobi. Oh, no, they showed Shinobi. Yeah, they showed off Shinobi, too. Now, that being said, because this one you would actually be interested in, what do you want to see them remake next? Or what do you want to see them add to any of those games that you want to play, Honeybee? Um... Besides Skies of Arcadia, we already called that one last year. <laughs> and we all know it's never happening. Oh my god, Sega? Did her mic cut off? I know this is gonna be really, really lame, but I actually, I mean, especially because, like, the movies came out and they were actually really good, I'd kind of like to see, like, a, like, a full, like, remake of some of the original Sonic games. I think that would be nice. Did you not and play Sonic be... Generations? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. That's like a hundred percent what you that want. That would explain the problem. Really? It's like oh, ten shit. bucks. Yeah, it's ten bucks. Oh, well. It also has a three D mode. Like ten years old. You can well, also play that. Super Sonic through the whole game instead of in one final boss fight. Oh wow! Shit. I guess dreams do come true. I have I have no needs for the rest of my life. I am completely satisfied with every area of my existence. I mean, damn. She has reached equilibrium. She has I reached maximum reached, sarcasm. I have reached uh, Nirvana. <laughs> Nerdvana. Over Sonic uh, Generations, That's essentially. actually a shirt. That's, that's it. I've that's seen all I that. want. No way. No, that's actually a shirt. I've seen it. I'm going to Google it. Oh, uh, yep, there they Is are. Is there anything else you wanted to add to that list? Nope. I'm just a huge Sonic nerd. Just apparently not enough of a nerd to realize they already did the whole thing. To be <laughs> fair, I've been out of 
You do have Sonic that. Frontiers, right? Yes. Did you get the DLC last month? No, I didn't. You can play Tails, Amy, and Knuckles. I cannot the tell. Fuck? I cannot tell you um, how much Baldur's Gate Three has consumed my life. I haven't. You already did another actually. Another game. <laughs> oh. What, I don't know why the they wanted Amy was... there, but they made Amy playable too. I'm still offended by that concept, but you can also play Tails and Knuckles in Sonic Frontiers. Completely off topic. Do you think? Do you think we'll have to deal with Amy in the next Sonic movie? Un. Oh. 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 Fuck no. No, we know what's coming in the next Sonic movie is Shadow the Hedgehog. He's I know. A He's a post-credit sequence. Oh, I know that. No Amy, but I'm, just and I'm happy they with gave that. Us, they gave us Tails and Knuckles in the last one. Yeah, and guess who's not important to that trio? Amy. <laughs> she really wants to be, though. You have no idea how much I fucking hate Amy. Oh, no. I, I have an idea because I'm with you there. Bro, like, I actually have to check to make sure I'm not around people who are actually named Amy because they might assume <laughs> I'm talking about them. Bro, bro, when I was looking up the union fee or getting the registering my projects with the uh, the sag after guild for the voice actor shit, guess who the fucking liaison was? Amy Rose. <laughs> what? I'm not joking. <laughs> and Seriously? She knew, and she knew about the Sonic character. She didn't know what she looked like, but she knew about the Sonic character. Oh my god. <laughs> He's going I to still have like, her Just emails. Just so you know, I hate you. I still have her emails. Because people don't believe me. Oh, that's funny. But yeah, go, go look up Sonic Generations. You get to play both Sonics, by the way. And also mm -hmm. Sonic Frontiers. DLC. Well, okay then. Okay, uh, Milk, you go next then. All right, so here's the, here's the, here's the situation. There are, uh, if I'm taking this this question in 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 two directions, which is either what to add to the remix they've already planned and announced as you know being done via trailers, uh, I actually don't really have anything because I didn't play those games. Don't bully me, please. I will cry. You know you're a young baby. <laughs> All right, thank you. As long as you understand. But with that said, I, I don't know, I guess my most generic answer is hopefully because they're, re, they're kind of remaking and remastering these games that are pretty old and, you know, still have a, a, a very passionate fan base behind them. I'm really hoping that they'll take the time to actually listen to what they have to say. Because if you're remaking something that's like a multiplayer game, uh, you, you have to tread incredibly carefully lest you end up ruining and tainting the image of the original game and then you like make the multiplayer balancing of it horrible and you suck. If you're talking about single player games, it's like, well, you just gotta, you still have to tread lightly to make sure that you don't just like get a bunch of pissed off, you know, Shinobi fans coming at your throat. Uh, so I'm just at the very least hoping that they might listen to what people have to say about what they think might be good for these remakes in whatever medium they end up finding them in uh, to at least give them uh, like 80% of the justice that they gave the original games, I suppose. Uh, and then if I was to take this in the other direction of like, what are other games that would be fun for them to remaster? I feel like I played really weird Sega games back in the day. Like the only ones that I can oh, think of Sega were on the Genesis. Sega games are weird, motherfucker. I, I know, I know they're all weird, but like I played ones that like, well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to pretend like I'm a hipster or anything. It's just the games that I play definitely don't fall within the realm of what most people think of when they think of like Sega games, well, more specifically the Star? Genesis Did you games. play Ristar? I didn't play Ristar. No, I. <laughs> Let me tell you. No, I played. I played fucking Pac-Man to a new adventure where you control bipolar Pac-Man with a slingshot. Officer. And then I. Officer. <laughs> oh no. Yes. Honeybee. Yeah. Did this motherfucker just say Pac-Man? Yes. Oh, wait, hold on. No. <laughs> the actual. No, that's no, I want to. I want to know where this is going. I will no. let him dig his own grave. <laughs> No, I, just I, no. That, it, it, I'll pass you the shovel. <laughs> Thank you. No, that was there was just that one specifically stood out to me as being very bizarre, but I don't actually know how popular it was. And then Holy the one shit! That I didn't think it, I, <laughs> Dude, Sega did not make Pac Man. I know that, but I'm saying it was. Oh wait, yeah, no, that's never mind. Okay, hold on. So here's no, no, no sorry. Oh, we are I'm not realizing... editing any of this. Uh, yeah, no, I'm okay. It's okay. You can clown me all you want. It's good for the views. No, uh, I, I, 
I'm I'm stupid, but in the way that like I played the game on there, I know they didn't make it. I just know that it was released on their console. So I totally conflated those and, and misrepresented those. And so now what I have to do is I have to uh I have to look up another game that I played to see if this was made by Sega. And if it wasn't, then uh I've officially wasted your guys' time. Uh so you're gonna have to pardon me for one second. Uh let me Google this. Um, all right, never mind. I was going to say uh, Sylvester Stallone and Cliffhanger, but I don't think they made that game either. So I have nothing to add here. I should, uh, kneek- I should let Honey Bee fucking <laughs> eat your kneecaps on principle. No, I mean, no, no, no. Sometimes, I'm not feeling that feral yet. Sometimes <laughs> it has to happen. And if that's what has to happen, if I... <laughs> Right, if my kneecaps are, get shredded and I get kicked out the door, that's one hell of a way to go out. Wait, are you volunteering your kneecaps as tribute? I'm not volunteering them. I'm saying if it has to happen, it has to happen. Like, there's not a whole lot I can do. Oh, man, uh, you've, you've just accepted it. I mean, <laughs> there's no coming back from this level of embarrassment. There's no level of coming back from the level of ignorance like, that I just I'm thinking about all the things that have ever happened on this channel. <laughs> like, all of them. That's like top three. I'm a game changer, dude. This is I'm two for two right now on absolutely Mick flabbergasting somebody. I'm gonna keep that streak going. Let's go. You know what? At least it's funny. Yep. I mean, yeah, that's all I'm here for. Okay, okay. He's let's 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 try. Let's try someone who won't make me want to get a bottle of bourbon. Officer, you take those questions. Okay, so. <clears throat> I believe Sega, with this announcement, they were doing, like, some of them were, like, hold on a second. they're hold saying... On, hold on, uh, Honeybee, did you want to link to the trailer? Yes, please. Okay, continue, officer. Uh, to my understanding, some of them were going to be, hey, this is an entirely new game in this franchise, which, hell yeah, awesome for uh, some of them, uh... And I think others, they might have been implying some sort of remaster sort of thing. Personally, I don't really care much for remasters. I just want to see new games. Like, Shinobi, like uh, like uh, what uh, Milk mentioned earlier. Yeah, if they mess that up, uh, the Shinobi fans will find them. And they won't know the Shinobi fans are coming. They, they, they'll, they'll just... Uh, Wake up to maybe a uh, de- uh, kunai stuck in their side or something. You're implying, or maybe Shinobi a warning. Are, uh, you're implying the shinobi players are themselves shinobis. Some of them might be, but most of them, yeah, probably not. Uh, but just as so long as they don't include that annoying, your health is always ticking down mechanic that uh, that one they released in. I think it was the PS2 era had which. <laughs> Please You're no. trying to say Shinmu. Huh? Are you trying to say Shinmu? No. I'm talking about Shinobi here. Oh, yeah. The one that was actually called Shinobi. Yeah, that was so yeah. bad. They they gave it a sequel just to make it make up for how bad the fucking first one was. Nightshade, It right? wasn't even because it was bad because, oh, it's a terrible game. It was bad because it was too fucking difficult on every difficulty. <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, yeah, Shinobi, I'd love to see a new game. Uh, I'd also like to see a new game for, say, the Shining series, a kind of old set of uh, JRPGs. I think the last one came out in, was it 2008? Uh, no, no, I think it was 2016, actually. I'd like to see, you know, something new for that, because it's been eight years. Certainly they can do something new that isn't just a re-release of one of the previous games. And I think a lot of, like, the old-school uh, side-scroller shoot 'em up fans are going to remember this one, Gunstar Heroes. If they do another game like that one, even if like a direct sequel maybe that would be fucking awesome that game was amazing for its time one of the best uh like most detailed uh pixel characters in 
quite a few video games of its uh, of its contemporaries at the time. Sorry, coughing. Uh, Those are the quietest and coughs I've ever heard. I, I put pulled my finger off of the push to talk button so I could cough rather than cough in the microphone. Ah, uh, but more Streets of Rage, hell yeah, that's good. And the only other two things I could think of that I'd like to see would be uh, another one from the side scroller shoot 'em up games, though with. L- Though a bit different from uh, Gunstar here, it was one of those uh, space shooters. Uh, Thunder Force. I think the last bullet one hell. for the that word one you're was for is Bullet Hell. Uh, it wasn't quite at Bullet Hell level, but uh, I think the last one for that one came back came out back during the PS2 era. I have no idea of the exact year, so uh, I yeah can't really help you there. And. I guess the only other thing that I could think of is Earthworm Jim, maybe? Huh. But, uh... Does that count as a Sega game? I'm pretty sure Sega were the ones... Or, wait, no. Sega, it was just released on Sega's consoles. I don't know if Sega had involvement in it. So, in that case, that's a derp on my part. Not the worst thing I've heard all day. Huh, Won't be I the last. So. But uh, yeah, that's uh, about it for me for Sega remakes that I can think of off the top of my head. <laughs> okay, my turn. First and foremost, I just want to get this out the way based on I don't know how disconnected you are from Sega. Uh, Honeybee, you do know there's a Streets of Rage 4, right? It's pretty good. Okay. Didn't know that. Okay. Well, um, four player co-op, uh, about Cherry, best character, about 15 playable characters. Also, much like Sonic Generations, it goes for as low as 10 bucks. Okay. Well, shit. However, the new one, as you've seen from the trailer is 3d. So yeah, you might want to go get that one. And I will totally play with you. It came out in 2019, 2018. Uh, has it been that long? I thought it was only yeah, like it came out two or three the, years. It came it came out during the pandemic. That's about all I remember. Let me take a look. Yeah. Also, you're obviously a River City Girls fan. You just don't know it yet. Um, but if you get River City Girls too, let me know. Because I want in on that. That's like, I believe, five playable characters on screen at once, on and offline co-op. Yeah, it looks like Streets of Rage 4 came out about four years ago, at least on Steam. Yeah, and um, River City Girls 2, your characters actually level up and gain new moves. And they know they're in a video game. Oh, that's fun. (laughs) Yeah. That's fun. Um, oh, looking into it, yeah, Streets of Rage 4, same release date for all the platforms that matter. Ha <laughs> ha! He's purposely <laughs> excluding the Switch. No, the Switch is one of the ones that matters. I'm just referring Stadia. to Stadia, yeah, yeah, Android, and the like. Okay. Um, well, I have Streets of Rage on the Microsoft Store. I don't know if they can link directly to Steam version, but they should. Um, moving on. Yeah, Honeybee's gonna have a lot of homework tonight. Um, I guess so. Look, I don't even know if I necessarily want a remake or a sequel not made by the original creator, because fuck that guy. Fuck all of his logic. Every last piece of it. That may sound like a joke, but I'm legitimately, like, half serious. I want either a Shinmu 3 remake, even though that game is only, like, four or five years old, and I want a Shinmu 4 not made by Yu Suzuki cause fuck that guy and fuck all of his logic um sh- yeah and Shinmu fuck Konami <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, fuck that's... Konami just in general yeah that, that's it that is his it's catchphrase statement I can always get behind yeah um even though they're remaking Metal Gear Solid 3 that statement is still valid 
So yeah. Um, I'll never forgive them for what they did to Silent Hill. And many other game franchises. And many other games, but Silent Hill was my baby. So is now a bad time to yeah, mention the that. four games they announced like two years ago? Which games? They announced four new games two years ago. Yes, but which ones? I don't know what the fuck they're called. They're new Silent Hill games. Okay, if they're not made by Team Silent, like the original Team Silent, I don't give a fuck. I don't know why it's funny when white girls say that, but it just is. Moving on. <laughs> Bruh, like... <laughs> I'll never forget. She was totally serious. Some white girl. I was walking down the hallway. She's talking to some other white girl, and she just yelled, "You trying to throw hands?" And I just died laughing on the floor for like five minutes. I have nothing to do with what's going on. And then I turned around. There were four other dudes dying on the floor laughing too. It just was funny. We don't know why. It just is. The shorter they are, the funnier it gets. Until your kneecaps are gone. Until your kneecaps are gone because I've ingested them. That was funny. Um, now, this one also goes without saying. I want a remake and a sequel to motherfucking Skies of Arcadia. Not going to happen. You already know this. What did I tell Don't you? Don't chase false hopes. What did I tell you about saying things out loud that hurt people? We just talked about <laughs> it not 20 minutes there ago. There has sometimes you have to pull off the band aid. He's just like, why do you hurt me in this way? I don't remember you saying that to Honeybee when I was telling her Aerith is still going to die. See. I don't think either of us were uh, contesting that she was, you know, well, going to die. No, she did. She literally did the whole episode. Don't bullshit no, me. I said, I said she might not. Saying it's a possibility. I'm saying the possibilities are see? endless. See, see, see? Why didn't you rip that band-aid off? Acknowledge the possibility, but know that it's likely not going to happen. So, yeah. so you can't you won't rip my bandaid off, but not hers. He does not believe in equal opportunity bandaid ripping. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna buy you an oil painting of Aerith dying. You know what? I would hang it up. I would hang it up on a wall. Now see, just now see that that completely destroys my whole reasoning for buy it. But it's okay. I didn't hit the checkout button, so I'm gonna cancel this shit real quick. Ah, damn. I mean, <laughs> oh no, that would be awful. Don't. Ah, uh, shucks. <laughs> Maximum sarcasm. Anyways, um. Good golly. Ew. No. Ew. Anyways. Let me get off this website. They got some cool ass oil paintings. I don't want to get lost in thought. Um, <laughs> okay, so I hate to say it, but everything Sega we wanted Sega to do, they're doing, with the exception of Skies of Arcadia. They did say that there will be more games announced, but we don't know what they are. Here's what we do know: Street, just, just you know, because there was more information after the trailer. Streets of Rage, Streets of Rage. Wow. Jet Set Radio will have an open world hub area, which is cool because a game like that needs it. Um, Streets of Rage 5 will not be called Streets of Rage 5. It'll be called Streets of Rage Revolution, Revolution and it'll be the first time the characters are playable fully in 3D in a game that isn't canceled. Uh, yep. But those are like the only two we know extra stuff about. They didn't say if Crazy Taxi was a remake of the first game or a sequel. And no one can tell based on looking at it. Because the area that they're in is from Crazy Taxi 1. Yup. Shinobi will not be based on 3D Shinobi. And it will be the original Shinobi. From the Sega side Genesis scroller. 2D games. Yeah, it's a side I'm scroller. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Um, basically, everybody got a remake or a sequel except Sonic. And Yakuza. But to be fair. And I, I know this may hurt somebody's feelings. I'm fucking pissed at how much love and attention Yakuza gets. So I'm not mad they got left out. Reminder, Yakuza Adam. is literally one of the only franchises that Sega's ever made that got a fucking remake. The only one. There's also the fact that both of those have had games recently. Not really. Yakuza remake was fucking back in like 2018. Wasn't there like a dragon? 
no, like, Yakuza is like a dragon. They just stopped calling it Yakuza fairly recently. Apologies. Wasn't there also the uh, JRPG one that they made? That's not a remake. That's a completely new spinoff series. Yeah, I, it, that's what I mean is it got something new recent. A lot of these older games got have had nothing for so many years. Yeah, except, Yakuza you know, gets rage. more attention... I won't say then it deserves... It gets more attention than is fucking necessary. Yakuza has got sequels consistently for two and a half to three year intervals. They're on like game number yep. seven. If we're talking chronological order, like numer numerical order, they are on game number like 10. 10! They had two zeros. Then they had one through six. They remade one. I think they remade two, two. Then they got the Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth RPG shit. There's two of those. How the fuck they get 10 games when they're basically Streets of Rage if Sega paid attention to Streets of Rage? Let's be honest. Okay. Uh, well, we were wrapping up anyway. Um, sorry, you have to cut out early, but it's all good. Uh, but there will be a lot of links for you when you get back. Okay, cool. All right. <laughs> Lots yep, of yeah, homework, guys. he said. Yeah. Later. So, honestly, all bullshit aside, with the maybe, and I'll stress this, maybe remaking of Fantasy Star Online 1. But I don't think they're going to do that. Or rather, if they do do it, it'll be more of a uh, Devil May Cry style situation. Oh, and Vanquish. Yeah, people forget about that one. I want them to remake Vanquish. Maybe Max Anarchy. But I really want them to remake Vanquish. Don't give it a sequel. Remake it. Make it longer. Because that game is over in like three hours. That game is basically an arcade game that they just put on consoles. We already know Virtual Fighter 6 is coming, so I'm not even going to mention that. And no, it's not coming out in 2024, so we can't add it to that already insane list. Thank God. But Virtual Fighter 6 might come out around come out around the same time as the next Smash Bros. more than likely. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Uh honestly, I'm just gonna say this. Hey, I'm glad we could come back and do this again another year. Uh you know, the channel's birthday was last week, but honestly, it don't really feel like a birthday. What feels like a birthday to me is Every time we come back from end of year break and vacation and we do this shit again, I'm fucking happy. Like, real talk. Because this is the shit that lets me know that, okay, you guys actually like what we're doing and whatnot. So, with that being said, officer, because you're not new, um... Uh, I'm going to leave the first closing remarks of the year to you, but before that, are there any new show ideas or any things in particular you want us to potentially discuss or change in the podcast going forward? At the moment, I can't think of anything, but if I do, I will let you know. Okay. Uh, Milk, happy to have you. Would you like to tell the audience where they can find you and your stuff? Yeah, simple as. Uh, the name DJ Serial Sauce is very easy to find on the internet. You look it up, you look for a Spotify, Apple Music, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Twitch, any of that stuff. Twitter, if you want. I don't know why you would, but if you want, you can do that. And the good news is that I have made sure to plug a link tree in most of those, so you don't have to go searching the name a th you know, 30 billion times to find what you're looking for. You just search one, you find me, you use the link tree, and uh, boom, now you're a part of my cult. So you gotta love wow, link tree. Okay. So you actually are a DJ. Uh, well, uh, I'm not a DJ. I'm just a music producer. Motherfucker. Which I guess that is a DJ. I guess. The, well, like, yeah, I guess it's just like the semantic difference between what my understanding of a DJ is and what other people's associations are. So yes, yes. <laughs> Both of them don't require a degree, but can still fuck with a studio. Anyways, fair enough. <laughs> um. All right. Uh. With that being said, I will definitely see you guys in the next one. I don't know when the audience is going to find this out because we got a lot of shit in the waiting. 
Uh, please remember to let me know who is and isn't going to get Final Fantasy VII Rebirth so we can make content about it. And I will see you guys when I see you guys. Ladies. Fair enough. Milk. <laughs>